Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, May 20th, 2022. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Parents, teachers, government officials, and past students of the St. Vincent Girls High School and the St. Vincent Boys Grammar School turn out in large numbers today to stand together in a show of solidarity calling for an end to violence, particularly against women. Our news team spoke with the principals of both schools who explained why they decide to take a stand against this scourge in the Vincentian society. We were having a staff meeting on Tuesday and one of my teachers, Miss Nisha Hope, shared her passionate and heartfelt grief at what is happening in our state. And as a school, we decided to act and to act swiftly. And hence this morning's advocacy against violence against women in our society. As an all-girls school, we thought it important to send a strong message that this is not, it should not be the norm. And so our girls quickly mobilized themselves to action. And here we are saying to the general public, stop. Stop the violence against women. Stop the violence, full stop. important because a message has to be sent that our women, our children are important. As I said earlier on, all of us, come, all of us would have come from a mother. So it's important that we stand against violence against women. Very, very important. So the St. Vincent Grammar School is standing in solidarity with our sister school, the girls' high school, but we are also sending a message because we have to teach our boys. We have to teach our boys to respect women. Our news team also spoke with a passionate teacher who said today was a good show of support condemning violence against women. However, there is also a need for parents to educate their sons from an early age how to treat females. It's so special and this has been my rhetoric. Um, we need to educate our sons and as I have a placard here, it says educate your son and you notice up here it has protect your daughter. And when we educate our sons, our daughters are going to be protected. And if as parents, we tell our children, our boys, that they're not, they not supposed to do certain things. You're supposed to love women. It is okay if you carry a girl's handbag. You know, with hair that, oh, you carry somebody's handbag, you're, you're girly, girly, or you're dotish man. No, it is the right thing to do. And men, God made men to protect ladies and if we are not doing that then we are failing we are failing as a people we are failing as a society so i want to say to the boys out there there are many reasons why men would but would resort to violence but i want to say to them that it stops with you you lift your hand that is your hand you chose to raise your hand so i want to say to them it, it needs to stop and we need to have this conversation as parents as a society we need to teach our boys i cannot stop saying this enough we need to educate our boys on the importance of taking care of women although some students stood in silence following the advice of their class teachers others were too passionate about the cause to remain silent well my name is matthew israel and a few, well, two years ago, uh, my mother was murdered by my father. So, and a lot of people didn't know her and they came, still came out and to show her support. So I felt it was necessary to come and also do so. I'm really concerned about the, concerned about how SVG is going and, hmm, I'm lost for words about the murders and, you know, it kind of touched me in a way since I, because my mother was affected by it, and I'm also hurt by it. Um, I feel that as a woman of this, this nation, I have a right to stand up for those who can't speak for themselves. I feel that it's very important to support each other, because if we don't, then who will? You know, I think that we must really stop killing our young ones. They are the future, and if we kill them out, then the nation itself will die as well. Recently, as, as over the years I've been hearing the more frequent things that have been happening to women, it's hit me a lot, especially because I have a younger sister, I feel like I've cared a lot more. I might have situations like this, and recently what happened to the girl, um, it kind of, it struck me a little bit, you know, and I felt like to come out today was something very important to me. 
and I feel like I'd be playing my part in society. I believe that all women deserve respect and the men need to stop what they are doing because it's wrong. We are all the same people on God's word and everything just needs to stop. So I'm here to protest violence against women. That women lives matter. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I want to stand with all the females in this school of GHS and in Aero St. Vincent and the Grandins for people who is being abused physically, mentally and emotionally. So I want to come here to stand with the other females to show them that they are not alone and that they could talk to say, well, other females are here with them and they could be safer to come to this um, front and talk and then for the males that they could come to say, well, they have learned that they are not supposed to treat women this way and the way that some men are treating them. So it is an opportunity for the younger men to come up into the generation to learn about that. Thank you. If bound to get men ever happen, they want everybody to gather here just like this. The student body of the St. Joseph Convent Kingston and staff also stood together outside the school gates calling for an end to violence. In light of the brutal murder of 17-year-old Precious Williams of Walvoro, Sign Hill, the teachers of the St. Joseph Convent Kingston say they are afraid of are afraid for their girls however they are putting everything in place to help them be more aware of what is taking place around them and how to handle certain situations sometimes you know as a teacher you have to have your antenna up you know um, sometimes a student may be misbehaving, maybe acting out in class, you know, um, sometimes there incidents where it seems like, you know, the student is calm and nice and well behaved all the time and then all of a sudden, you know, it's just like they chip off as you might say. And so you really have to have your antenna up for that and so sometimes when that happens, you know, we ask questions, we send them to their counsellor and yes, sometimes we do uncover the reality that, you know, students and our particular girl students sometimes are being abused. Um, in the home sometimes it comes from outside of the home because men um, sometimes can contact these girls over WhatsApp and Facebook, you know, and all these different things. So, um, yes, it's something that we, that we do deal with as teachers and we have to help our girls from time to time to get out of those situations. In their support in solidarity for stopping or decreasing violence against women and girls as we are a school of girls and we're shaping girls to be women of the future. We think that this would be a good experience for them to depart what they know and try to help one another and bring awareness to such. So we just wanted to take this opportunity, strike while the, striking while the iron is hot, to ensure that not only are they aware but they understand how serious the problem is and for them to have an opportunity to lend their voice, their voices to the victims who are going through a lot at this time and the families to help join their voice with the families of the recent women who have been murdered especially given that the most recent was just 17 years old she was a teenager and our girls are teenagers so we thought that it was very important for them to have an opportunity to demonstrate this morning with plat cards in hand the students have one clear message in the violence now Students and teachers of the Gume Methodist School were also part of the solidarity activity, pleading with Vincentians to stop the violence. I do not know what is going on in St. Vincent these days. It was a sparsely populated place and it was very nice. And now everybody is coming in and just ruining the perfect, perfectness of St. Vincent. Stop the violence. Stop rape. Stop all violence against every gender. All the violence against women. Women are mothers, and when you murder them and kill them and sexually harass them, children can end up losing their mothers, and they can be sad for their life. They can end up in foster homes, orphanages, and so on. Please stop violence against women.
students of the School for Children with Special Needs also took part in the activities today, calling on Vincentians and others to put an end to violence, especially against women. Outside the school gate, the students held placards with various messages. What they are doing to us? They, they killing us. They put a put we in the sack. I will put it we on the ground and make our body smells. And we don't like it. This should stop. A teacher of the school appealed to males across SVG to stop abusing women. Promote the violence again. To stop the violence again. Gender affair violence. That is for the women. When we're looking at whatever is happening in the community, there are a lot of violence that are geared towards the women within our society. And as women and as children and as boys and girls, we have to teach our children that it is definitely wrong to hit, to do anything against women especially, because we have to stand up for all women. So the little girls are out here, the boys are out here, we have to train up our boys to tell them that it is definitely wrong. So that is why we are out here to let up the community and the whole wide world know that it is wrong and that we need to stop it and stop it right now. Youngsters involved in the Marion House Youth Program also supported today's activity, condemning all forms of violence in the Vincentian society. Volunteer Director of the Marion House, Jeannie Oliver, said those involved in the program are very angry about the recent spate of violence in the society against the youth and women, especially during this child's month. And that they are the world, right? They are children of the universe. And they have a right to be here. They are the children. And nobody must abuse them. Nobody. No parents. No teachers. No community person. No stepfather. No father. No uncle. No sons. No daughters, nobody must abuse them because their body is a test, God's temple, the temple of God. And so that is why they are angry this morning, particularly with the last one that we had yesterday, of the seven-year-old boy that was found dead in abandoned vehicle. So. Oliver said the youth are being let down by some of their elders, especially in the public service, and steps must be taken to bring back community youth groups to life. Music, we are not saying no, but there are positive ones as well. And what the youths of Marion House are singing this morning is that they are the world. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who, make, who should make a better life for us. Okay? So, they are those songs that are positive and the youths know them and they sing them. That is why they have chosen the one this morning. We are the world. We are the children. Yes, there are negative vibes. But we need to continue to speak with our young people and that is why public servants need to get up out of their chair, out of their comfort zone and go into the communities and re-establish the groups, make sure that they are functioning so that we'll have less violence because we'll have continuous education. Not a one-shot education. When there's International Women's Day or International Child's Day, but throughout International Children's Day, but throughout on a regular basis, every day. Some of the participants of the Marion House Youth Program said it is time to put an end to the violence. The mothers need the support of the fathers and the fathers need to be in the children's life to protect them and to bring, and to bring them up. Because a mother can do only so much, but the fathers need to be there for the children to guide them and always protect them. And to help them to make better decisions in life. And not to become an abuser or a rapist or somebody who will commit incest. Because we are, we are against the violence against women and crime and sin right now. We're having too much violence against the children and the, um, against women in Vinci and we need to stop it. Well, as a female, um, 
need to be careful of my surroundings because you never know what might, ha might happen because of the amount of violence going on in the country. So um, it's a norm these days that um, girls must stay inside and the boys are allowed to go outside, right? And because of the violence that are happening now, I wouldn't want to go outside because I'm afraid that something might happen to me. Right now, there are not a lot of young people in school because of the domestic violence from parents, um, no financial support, emotional support, and because of that they are unable to continue school and better themselves in life. And members of parliament and persons from non-governmental organizations and others also stood in solidarity today with the various schools making a, taking a stand in condemning violence, especially against women. At the E.T. Joshua Airport Tarmac, where a number of students and teachers gathered with placards in hand, our news team met up with Minister of Gender Affairs and the youth, Randy Brewster, who said all acts of violence must come to an end and it requires the support of everyone. Minister of Gender and Youth Affairs, what is your stance on what is happening here today? Well, I think, well, I know the, the general stance across St. Vincent and the Grenadines is that there's a call to stop violence against women and girls. And it is something that is supported generally by the entire nation. And as the minister with the responsibility for gender affairs, I have a part to play in making sure that we put an end to the senseless act of violence against our women and girls here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But I must also say that it is not only a governmental thing, um, but we need all hands on deck in the fight to end domestic violence here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm happy today that the schools, the educational institutions across St. Vincent and the Grenadines has taken this leap to say we want to let our voice be heard, that we are not in support of anyone being abused, whether it's verbally, physically or emotionally, as a matter of fact. So I am here this morning with, with many hats because I'm a father, I'm a brother, I have sisters, I have a mother who is also a woman. And I have a daughter who attends the girls' high school as well. So it would be remiss of me to not show, show up here this morning in support, to show my support and solidarity as we ask the entire nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to help us to put an end to this senseless act of domestic violence against our women and girls. Minister of the Public Service, Frederick Stevenson, Opposition MP for East Kingston, Fitz Bramble, and Chief Executive Office of the SVG Tourism Authority, Glenn Beach, also stood in support of the activity today, calling for an end to violence. I congratulate all the students and the teachers and those who organize these activities. Um, as the past Minister of the, the Social Development, I did a lot of work in relation to the pushing for, for the Domestic Violence Act, which was passed in 2015. Um, and, and so I'm happy to see that persons are now attracting themselves because of what we see happening in, in, in the country in relation to some of these crimes. This is an awesome, awesome initiative on behalf, on the part of the students. I mean, I think this sends a very important message that the young people, the young people have seen it fit to take the lead on our fight against crime and violence in this country. This is not just a government problem or an opposition problem or a political party problem. This is an entire national problem and it must be addressed from a national standpoint. Every sector of society has a role to play in combating this, this, this challenge that we're having right now. Good is you know something that should not be tolerated um i think what the students did today was exceptional i'm happy that it came from them and it didn't have to come from 
um, any government or, or any society, any group, but more from the young people. So I think that brings even more attention to it and it's very commendable that a lot of the schools joined in with high school. I think this was the initiative of high school originally, it was high school. So I think it's great. I think as a society we need to take a look at ourselves in terms of how we deal with things. It's, it's not only about what is taught in schools, it's also about what we teach our children at home. SVG TV News understands that almost all of the schools across SVG took part in the solidarity activity today, calling for an end to violence and crime in the Vincentian society. The Calder Road has been renamed Indian Bharat Drive Marsh in India's honor during President Ram Nath Kovind's four-day state visit to SVG. The renaming ceremony took place on Thursday. Delivering remarks at the ceremony, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalves described the day as a great one of tremendous significance for the civilization of India and that of the Caribbean and the Vincentian component. Very importantly, the spirit of the forebears of the persons today of Indian descent those persons who crossed the dark waters nearly 2500 2500 who came here as indentured servants they would be very proud as to what we have done together your excellency It is a very moving and emotional time for all of us, not only persons of Indian descent. PM Gonzalez said while the occasion is to celebrate the Indian dimension of the island's cultural matrix and civilization, it is not separate as it forms part of a social solidarity which exists. As I said today in Parliament, a veritable symphony. Of course, as in all symphonies, from time to time, there are dissonances. But those dissonances are muted or resolved through the cultural wellsprings which have grown up or through our formal institutions. And I say that this metaphoric symphony consists of the songs of the indigenous people. We are the rhythm of Africa. We are the melody of Europe. We are the chords of India. And we are the homegrown lyrics of the Caribbean. You saw it in the children from Calder School who performed so well before us here this afternoon. Think of it. The Prime Minister used the opportunity to thank the Government of India for assisting SVG with COVID-19 vaccines in the early stage of the pandemic. We had money to buy. Nobody will sell us in those days. You remember vaccine nationalism? People tend to forget that. When the Western world was hoarding the vaccines, and we couldn't get any to buy. I wrote my friend Prime Minister Modi. And in two days, the response came. You will get your 40,000 doses of vaccine. <laughs> Within one week, they were here at Argyle International Airport. And very importantly, and this is why I will never forget, and I will never be ungrateful, and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines will never forget, and will never be ungrateful to the government and people of India. At that time, India did not have enough vaccines for itself. And the Indian government and people and its leadership 
they taught us an important lesson in solidarity. The noblest form of solidarity is not from to give from the abundance that you have, but from the little that you possess. The Indian Pre President Ramnath Kovin thanked the government and people of SVG for standing with India and its people, noting that the development partnership with SVG is based on the spirit of universal brotherhood. I am happy that Indian culture and Indian civilization, civilization is being preserved and maintained in a country which is far away we can say 15 to 16,000 away from India. And uh, please, I do request all Indians who have settled down here, who have made this country as their home, please do maintain your Indian identity also. <clears throat> Friends, in the last 42 years, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines have created a democratic, plural, and multi-ethnic society full of optimism and progress. The economic achievements of this small but vibrant country are laudable. Under the wise guidance of generations of far-sighted leaders, the people of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines have transformed this island into an impressive example of peace and prosperity in the Caribbean. We want to support our brothers and sisters here in building a stronger St. Vincent and the Grenadines with infrastructure projects that add value to the well-being of the people. I would also urge all of you to connect with the new India, its immense journey and rapid economic growth. Today, the Indian president and his delegation visited the Grenadine island of Canawan. This evening, a cocktail reception will be held at La View Hotel, where President Coven will present donations to the SVG Cricket Association and the SVG Cricket Umpires Association. And on Thursday, the First Lady of India visited the School for Children with Special Needs, where a check of 25,000 U.S. dollars was handed over to the Governor General, Dame Susan Duggan, uh, for the Governor General's Charitable Trust. On hand to witness the handing over was Cabinet Secretary Katian Banwell, Principal of the School for Children with Special Needs, Nassim Smith, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mikhail Burke, and members of the Indian delegation as well as other members of the diplomatic corps. The First Lady's visit to the school forms part of the official state visit of the President. They are expected to depart SVG to return to India following today's activities. In other news, it is following the discovery of the decomposing body of seven-year-old Lenny Lewis of Diamond on Thursday afternoon, residents are pondering on the possible cause of death. They say Lenny was a jovial child. However, he had a difficult upbringing and was often left unsupervised. A neighbor expressed shock with Lenny's death. Boy and he hand. That's how that's how it is. He just hand, but he's a nice boy, and I like him. Boy, when I hear that, I say chicken, chicken dead. I say because. Tuesday when mommy went to sell her back low, the mother sent them to school, stop school, and then she went on with the truck. And then I noticed only Monday alone we see him. And I didn't see him yesterday, now Wednesday. Yes. So I since four days now, they say he was in the car, um, just dead. Our news team also spoke with principal of the Stubbs Government School where Lenny was a student. The principal said the staff and classmates are saddened by his death. Yes, staff and students are saddened about what happened to Lenny. Lenny Lewis. Well, Lenny was frequently absent from school. Well, that jovial lad. The jovial lad. 
and his body was discovered by an employee at the Diamond Landfill. A post-mortem examination is to be carried out on his body to ascertain the exact cause of death. The police say investigation into his death is ongoing. In other police news now, we hear that Ronald Eiton, a 36-year-old unemployed of Georgetown, was arrested and charged with two counts of theft on Thursday, May 19, 2022. On the first count, Eiton allegedly stole the sum of $4,600 in cash, the property of a 67-year-old parliamentarian of Sandy Bay. The theft occurred in Villa between January 31st and March 1st, 2022. Iton was also charged with the theft of $1,200 in cash from a 31-year-old clerk of Cedars. The incident occurred in Villa between June 30th and August 1st, 2021. The accused appeared before the Kingston Magistrate Court on Friday, which is today, to answer the charges and pleaded not guilty. Station bail was continued. The matter was adjourned to July 12th, 2022. Thank you.